There's an old adage for computer novices that says, if you can smash something with a hammer, it's hardware. But if you can only swear at it in futility, it's software. But not everything is that cut and dried. And one of the most important parts of your PC is actually a closely linked fusion of hardware and software. I'm talking about the basic input output system or BIOS, which I certainly don't recommend hitting with a hammer, by the way, no matter how upset you are. So the BIOS is a very small piece of code that sits on a read-only or a flash memory chip on your computer's motherboard. It's often referred to as the motherboard's firmware, since it links the software to the hardware. But how? Well, think about it kind of like a person. Your brain stem helps control very fundamental bodily functions like breathing and your heartbeat, but it doesn't do any actual thinking. So your computer's BIOS does some very basic but crucial things without which you couldn't watch TechQuick or have your Red Bull fueled CSGO marathons, but it doesn't, you know, render graphics or anything like that. So when you first turn your computer on, the BIOS is the first thing to spring into action and wake up the rest of your computer, kind of like how your car's ignition gets the engine going. The BIOS first checks settings stored in a CMOS chip to determine how the user wants the system to run. So that's all that stuff that's in the utility that you get to by mashing delete or F2 when you first boot up. Then what it does is it initializes your devices accordingly. CPU, RAM, graphics card, peripherals, and so on. After this, the BIOS will run the Power On Self Test or POST to make sure that all the gizmos inside your case are functioning correctly. If everything is hunky-dory, you'll usually hear a single beep to let you know that everything's good, provided that you installed the little speaker that came with your motherboard. If you get an error, you know, like beep, 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 it's not Morse code, it's probably telling you you need to reseat your RAM or a video card or check for a part that's just plain gone kaput. Once that's done, the BIOS will check for a bootable device, meaning some kind of drive with an operating system on it, and then it'll hand off control of your computer to the OS. Now, old school BIOSes often provided a link between your keyboard, mouse, and other devices and the OS, while modern operating systems like newer versions of Windows control the hardware more directly. So once you're at the Windows desktop, your BIOS basically goes to sleep until you need it to start things up again. Seems pretty straightforward, right? Well, sort of actually. The way that the BIOS was implemented for a long time had some very serious limitations, one of the most obvious of them being drive support. The system that a conventional BIOS uses to access your hard drive or SSD called the Master Boot Record or MBR could only handle partitions less than two terabytes. And that was fine for a long time, but with many modern hard drives holding way more data, it became obvious that something new was needed. The Unified Extensible Firmware Interface, or UEFI, which no one can agree how to pronounce, was born. Not only can UEFI deal with insanely large storage devices, we're talking millions of petabytes here, it's also quicker than a conventional BIOS to boot up, and can use an actual graphical interface, complete with animations and mouse support. Older BIOS has only featured that blue screen that looked kind of like a crash, but it was fine, which at least I guess was better than the really old days where there was no BIOS utility at all, and you had to physically move jumpers around on your motherboard in order to change settings. Speaking of going through tedious procedures in order to make basic changes to simple stuff, FreshBooks is the tool that makes your accounting pretty much the most tedious part of running a small business, simpler and more accurate. It helps you get organized, get paid on time, and send out bills correctly, all kinds of great stuff. FreshBooks is on a mission to make freelancers, whether you're a plumber or a computer technician, you run a, a small yoga studio, you run a daycare, whatever kind of small business you're running, FreshBooks takes your accounting and bookkeeping and your billing stuff and puts it in a cloud-based utility that is easy to use, even for people who aren't super technical, and they're adding new 
features all the time. Now you can accept deposits, like say for example you're a house painter. So you can make sure that even if the client bails, you're not stuck holding literally gallons of paint that you had to pay for out of pocket and now have no way to return because you can't take back tinted paint. I speak from experience. So getting started on FreshBooks is extremely simple even if you're not a numbers person and you can try it for free for 30 days by going to freshbooks.com forward slash tech quickie and entering tech quickie in the how did you hear about us section. So thanks for watching guys. If you like this video, hit the like button. It's more of a sideways thumb. What could you do with a sideways thumb? If you dislike the video, then you can suck it. Jag. <laughs> oh boy. So you can leave a comment under the video if you have suggestions for future videos. And you can also subscribe and follow and all that good stuff if you want to see more Tech Quickie videos just like this one.